against Donald Trump. Being against oh, Donald no, Trump. Yeah. Perfect. No, Perfect. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> Come on, she's she's tougher. Is this your girlfriend? Yes. She's she's braver than you are. Come on, man. She's willing to say what she believes. I admire her. Good for her. Uh, you got audio? Actually, I'm I'm gonna yeah I'm gonna stay on this side. This side's good. All right, guys. What's your names? I'm Jake. Jake. I'm Emma. Jake. Emma. Where are you guys from? I'm from New York. Another New Yorker. Jersey Central. Jersey Central. Monmouth County. Yes. Marlboro. No way. Yeah. I grew up in Manalapan, oh. and I live in English Town now, so we're neighbors. Very nice. Uh, all right, so. You were watching us talk to those fine gentlemen yeah. over there, and your attention was caught. You wanted to talk about Trump. Yeah, I mean, everything he's doing with Corona and just his, you know, beliefs, morally, I don't stand with. Okay, yeah. your thoughts? Um, honestly, I don't have a big political stand, but whatever the lady says, I'll go with. Look at that. That's a gentleman right there. Uh, all right, so you don't like what he stands for. Tell me, uh, what's the most offensive thing or most incorrect thing you think he's done? Um, I mean, just as a woman, some of the sexist things he said and things along those lines. Like what? Um, comments he's made about different news reporters, different females that have spoken out against him, things along those lines. Which, which news reporter? I'm thinking of one, but I... Um, oh, I forgot her name, but it was this... Was it Megan, Megan Kelly? Yes, yes that he was saying things about it that so he wouldn't have said to a man, but because she was a woman, he used that against her. I mean, he made fun of a lot of people. He made fun of Rosie O'Donnell. Yeah, and anyone, and even men too, anyone that goes against him, he can make a comment about that isn't, you know, anything to do with their political views or anything to do with, like, substantial facts, but rather just their looks and things along those lines. All right, so those are, like, uh, criticisms of his personality. Yeah, it's just personality. As, like, my president, I don't want someone whose his morals don't align with mine. Got you. What about legislatively? What 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 do you like? What do you not like about him? Um, I mean, I think some of his economic stuff is okay, but um, the like way what? Give me an example. Um, just I mean, what he's been doing during this time has been good for me. I don't really know the details, but for my family and things like that. Um, I mean, I mean, things I don't like. I mean, I think he could have kind of handled Corona sooner. I mean, there's other countries that are already, you know out of it and we're still in the clear you know like there's still so much here so um i don't know if you remember back in like i want to say february uh mayor de blasio in new york and speaker pelosi's from san francisco her districts out in california they were out on chinese new year like in february i don't know if you remember this and they were talking about how people need to get out in public not be uh, discriminatory against the Asian community that everything was fine and they were waltzing around you know eating outdoors hanging out and uh, I think the health commissioner in New York got a lot of shit for that um, so essentially like both sides were making somewhat light of it beforehand including the highest ranking Democrat in our government do you think that that's just a Trump thing or do you think it kind of went both ways um, I do definitely think it went both ways I mean I think at first no one was really taking it as seriously as it should because no one knew it would become to this but I do think as like the president, he should have seen, okay, this is what's happening in Italy and China and wherever else. And okay, we should close our borders sooner and things like that. Gotcha. Yeah, you got no, yeah, I definitely feel that the whole statement on quarantining the sick kind of was taken out of proportion. And it should have been more of quarantining not only, not only the people that aren't sick, is you can't shut down a country. If you shut down a country, I mean, our whole economic system went down, but more of, yeah, just being the sick and like people are people are laid off and the parents don't have jobs and it's just, it's just you got to quarantine the sick and if you're willing to come out and take the risk of coming out then you should go out but you can't shut down a country because of a virus got you so you, you uh you had mentioned that he didn't close the borders down soon enough so i'm assuming you're you wanted the borders down locked down on both borders early countries i've heard of i think i forgot what country it was but it was one, one country that right away locked down their borders and they had like very under a thousand cases like and for us i mean we kept it open and now and now look i mean it's still here and everyone's still out like you have to kind of live your life but at the same time i mean you kind of it's still here and there could be another crazy outbreak again mm -hmm. where so we're sh all should we should trump have built a wall more quickly to kind of maybe protect our border um i mean not a wall but you know just cut <laughs> down travel <laughs> So you just you just want people stopped by customs, basically? Yeah, just to sort of stop people coming in and out of the country. And if they're coming back from the country for them, you know, and they're a citizen here to get tested before they come back in. And I think there was a couple things he could have done sooner. I mean, things were still open when it got bad, and then it was all shut down. And that's not just on him, but, you know, just on the country in general.
Right, but I mean, the people that try to sneak in from that border, they're not exactly going, hey, border agents, like, is this where we check in to get it? Like, they're not doing that. They're, like, running across the desert and hopping over rivers and boulders and just trying to get into Texas or wherever, Arizona, if they can. Um, all right, we, we kind of beat Trump to death. Uh, we talk a lot about Trump. It gets a little boring sometimes because it's like, yeah, you think this, I think that. and It gets, it gets a, little, it's a little facile to me. But uh, let's talk about something else. Let's talk about racism. Do you guys believe this, this term systemic racism is real? Yes, 100%. And tell I think tell that, me what it means to you. I think that people who think that it isn't real are the racist. Because those people are so unaware of what goes on around them and that they don't understand. Like, they might not think they're racist, but certain things that they think and different actions along those lines are. Okay, so uh, what does what Black Lives Matter movement? There are so many people like I see on TikTok people that are just so unaware of reality. What is what does it mean to you? What does the systemic racism racism mean? Um, that I think that honestly it comes from their parents and they just they hear what their parents say and then from there that's kind of just how they grow up and this is the sort of bias that they have about different groups of people. So systemic means it comes from your family. I think that yeah, and then that's just the cycle through generations. Okay. Uh, did you feel like you grew up in a racist environment? No, not at all. No. Do you feel that most people grow up in a racist I don't environment? I think most people do, but I do think more than you would think do. I mean, I think our area is a lot more uh, like progressive along those lines, but I do think that in you know other areas there is more cases. So if you if you had to put like a percentage uh, across the country, so it's not just our area, but all areas, and you had to say, I think this percentage of people grow up in a systemically racist environment, what percentage do you think that is? Oh, I have no idea. I can't, I can't say because so many times people aren't, you know, so outspoken about it. But Because the word systemic to me kind of implies endemic, like it's unilateral across the entire system, like it's yeah, ever-present. Right. But I think because it's a generational thing from what I, my standpoint, that and coming from their parents and hearing what their parents say or their grandparents, that... It's you really I really can't put my finger on it. Gotcha. You got anything on this? I have nothing. What uh what do you think about BLM's platform that's on their website, their their uh their values that they stand for? Which ones stand out to you? What what do you think about the things they purport on their website? Um just that honestly, like there I'm hearing all these sort I wasn't so aware of certain things and that mask sucks, it keeps going down every two seconds. I I don't want to take it off. <laughs> but I'm hearing all these things about, you know, different instances that I haven't heard about different people getting arrested, wrongly convicted, things along those lines that I wasn't aware of before. And through looking at that website, different posts on Instagram and things, I've really become so much more aware. So the, the, one of the things that I, I, I'm not going to keep it a secret, I have some issues with some of the things they have on their website. Uh, one of them is t specifically about uh, rejecting the Western prescribed nuclear family, right? So they don't like mother, father, kids. Uh, and they reject that as being a norm. Do you think that's a good or a bad thing? Um, I mean, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I understand where they're coming from about it, you know, being the accepted norm of have mom, dad, kids. But I do think that, you know, any sort of, you know, I get how it should be just what is expected of you, but sort of just, you know, that's if that's what you want to do, then go for it. But another thing is there's nothing wrong with it. You got anything? I have nothing. So I'll, I'll, she's just the chief here. We're gonna <laughs> stay with her. So do you, do you think kids? Let's put it this way. Do you think a kid has a better opportunity at life if he grows up with one parent versus two parents? No. I mean, there's so many successful people that have grown up with one not parent. Not economic way. Not economic. I mean, obviously, economically, it can be more challenging when you're not having two incomes to come in. But there's still successful people who've had one parent or no parent. Like you, yeah, there's you go through. You know, your challenges. Right. There, there's there's anecdotes, but like, do you? think from a statistical perspective that the outcomes for those two groups of people are identical in every facet their success rate how much money they make whether they get married whether they buy a house no, no just because I mean if you're getting things you know if you have a family with two incomes and your your parents are able to support you for college and things like you know those can all change sort of where you go but there's stories of people who weren't able to pay for college they go to community college they work two jobs and you know yeah, because yeah, it's, it's, it's actually quite pronounced, the difference. And it's funny, it's like if you take away race and you just talk about I have a mom or just a mom or just a dad or if I have a mom and dad, you're like, no, it's, it's the exact opposite. You have a much better chance at buying a home, uh, becoming a millionaire, raising a family, not going to jail, not dying young from a disease. 
they can all be correlated to having two parents in the household statistically. Uh, it seems that the math kind of contradicts that. But uh, I can send you something afterwards that, that talks about that. But it is quite fascinating because oftentimes people make it about a race or a class thing. It actually has nothing to do with money. It has nothing to do with race. It just has to do with having a family structure. And that's kind of what irks me about that group is they very blatantly say, well, we don't. We reject this. We don't want this. Um, they talk about a lot of, a lot of gender issues. Um, we can ask you about that. What do you think about gender identity? Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Um, I mean, I think that there isn't just male and female. I mean, I I love that now every things are becoming more open to other genders and things along those lines. Gotcha. Anything? I think you are what you, you it's your own body, you're your own person. You decide what you want, yeah. what you love, who you, you the person are your own you person. are. Why should it matter to anyone yeah. else? Gotcha. Uh, what what would we say is what defines a man, what defines a woman? Is there a definition? I don't think there's a definition and I think, you know, there's stereotypes and things along those lines, but I don't think there's a definition of what a man is and what a woman is because I think you know a woman can do anything that really a man can do. I'm getting bitten alive by bugs yeah, so that's why I'm so like bad. constantly slapping myself if anybody's watching this and thought what is this guy doing like line dancing like a cowboy. Yeah this big bite. Uh, what I forget what those are called those gnats, the sand gnats. Uh, so well, let's put it this way we, we actually talked to somebody about this last week. Um, you're obviously you're a female right? You're a male? Yes. I'm a male. Um, how would you feel like if you were in a bathroom uh, getting changed, you know, washing your face, whatever it is you're doing, and just 10 dudes walk in and they just tell you like, well, I think I'm a woman. Like, would you feel a little uncomfortable in the bathroom? I mean, honestly, if I'm going to the bathroom, I'm going to the bathroom, I'm getting out, washing my hands. I mean, I wouldn't really feel uncomfortable. I mean, if they're go if they're taking what it is and just like saying it to... Well, they're whatever they feel they are, right? Whatever, is that the threshold? Whatever they feel they are, but I'm saying if they're jokingly like trying to whatever but if they're if that's who they say they are then great like it doesn't bother me I'm going to the bathroom and I'm getting out I'm not it's a bathroom it doesn't so you, you don't have an issue say like you had like a six-year-old daughter and you're in a locker room at a gym or something people are getting changed if you just had like 30 guys come in and just get take their pants off because they're about to hit a shower if you don't feel comfortable with it then you do you know then you go somewhere else right so you think you think it's appropriate that people can do that and it's incumbent on you to leave if you're uncomfortable I think it's a personal thing and you, yeah, you deal with it yourself. If you feel uncomfortable in any situation, then you can't go attacking someone else. You have to... Oh, no, you shouldn't attack anybody. Right. But, I mean, you could take a position on whether you think that's correct or not. And I think that that's fine. You think it's fine? Yeah. All right. Uh, anything else that we haven't covered that... What is something you want to talk about that I haven't touched? It could be about anything, not just politics. We know you don't like Trump. <laughs> Did we talk about guns at all? I'm assuming you guys don't like guns. No. I, I do not like guns. I mean, with all the school shootings and just like leaving high school recently that I don't want to be in, you know, it's scary. And after all these shootings with Parkland and I mean, I knew some people in the Parkland shooting and things like that. Yeah. Like it's, it's scary to know, especially because like, especially after Parkland, when I heard about people that I know, like actually being in that position, it's scary and going into school, not knowing if it's your last time mm -hmm. seeing your family. So do you feel that uh, minorities are especially susceptible to police brutality, that they are more likely to become a victim of police violence? I mean, from what we've seen sadly, recently, yes. yeah, we've sadly. Seen so. yeah. Uh, do you think that perhaps they should be protected? Should they maybe be able to legally carry firearms or weapons to be able to protect themselves from that abuse? No, because I think that the more weapons, the more problems. But I do think that... Um, that there should definitely be some sort of gun control measures. So should we all, there's uh, like seven police officers standing right there right now. Should we also disarm them and not let them walk around I with mean, guns? I think that would be better if you, you would no before one that. had guns. Gotcha. Yeah. If guns were taken out of the whole equation, there'd no be no... if no one has that upper hand with a weapon, then... Yeah. Uh, should we make like cocaine and marijuana <laughs> legal as well? No, I don't think so. Because <laughs> you, you can get weed if you want to, right? Yeah. Do you think people will get guns even if they're illegal? Yes, 100%. Yeah, 100%. but then at least there's more. You can't just walk into a place and get a gun. Well, you can't walk into a store and get a gun in New Jersey. I've heard, not in New Jersey, but in <clears throat> other places. I've heard of people being able to go into a gun show and being able to get a gun. Like where they're not, obviously they, you need a license, but I've heard of stories of people doing that. Yeah, you, in other states, the New Jersey gun shows are illegal. Yeah, like parents' guns and things like that. There's yeah, that's illegal. That's called a straw purchase. Like if you get but caught then, doing that. Yeah, but illegal or not, then if they go into a school with it and... Yeah. Right, but it's illegal. It's already illegal. Like but what can you do, make it more illegal? The dad wouldn't have the gun. 
in the first place. Right, but they're breaking the law. They don't care. The point is they're going to get to it anyway. It's not like saying, necessarily. it's like saying, like, I'm sure you don't want to do heroin, right? Or you're not a heroin addict, right? No. And heroin's already illegal. Yeah. But, like, how can we, yes, you can. how can we make it more illegal so people don't overdose on heroin? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, but you could start off by just making guns illegal. And right, so heroin's illegal. Yeah. How do we stop overdoses? They're already illegal. Overdoses? Yeah. I can't tell you that. Right, there's no answer. Because if people are really inclined to do it, they're going to find a way. It's kind of the Oops. argument I'm making. Uh, if people want to buy illegal guns, they're going to find a way. The stuff you're saying about gun shows, like people often point to like gun show loophole. Uh, yeah. you, you, if you make a transaction at a gun show, you have to go through a NYX check. You have to go through a background check. So it's not something that just, you know, people can't just walk up and say, oh, I want that gun. And then they just pick up and take it. Um, but anyway, anything else before we, before we finish up? I think that's it. Awesome. We're neighbors. I'm glad to yeah. talk to you guys. Good to meet you. Nice Take care, you. guys. All right.